The next complication we want to see uh, is the time zone. It's a very interesting one because we live in a world where everyone's traveling, well, maybe less so now, <laughs> but uh, traveling is really something that came very late in uh, our history. Um, so it was important to have watches that can accompany the traveler and indicate the right time. What is time zone? Well, very simply displaying several time zones. So you can distinguish the home time, which is your uh, time that stays in your heart and the local time where you are when you travel. There are two kind of time zone complication families. The first one is the GMT, uh, which is actually displaying one or two additional time zones. And there is the world time complication, which is actually allowing to see all the different cities and all the different time zones in one go. Let's have a look at it. First, a little bit of history. The solar time. We have use the solar time as a reference since the 19th century. Why? Because we were using sundials and the, 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 the shadow of the uh, sun was cast onto a dial or uh, any kind of device, but it was pretty much linked to the local where you were. Because of course, the sun is not at the same time here and there. So the local time was fine as long as you didn't travel. Then. Of course, there is a problem when you start moving around. Um, we know that the, the, the time is different. If it's 9 o'clock in Paris, it's 10 in Athens, it's 4 p.m. in Tokyo, it's the middle of the night in the U.S. It's all good as long as you don't travel and you don't need to be interconnected. So there is a major drawback also when you travel locally because if it's 12 o'clock in London, it is 12.07 in Birmingham and 12.13 in Cardiff. And again, as long as you don't travel, no issues. But then uh, people started to travel. So in the 19th century and the development of travel, of communication, um, the coordination of time was more and more needed. The boom of railways in the beginning of 19th century led to an even faster travel. And then there was a need for coordination. In Europe, you had around 30 different local times, which actually generated a lot of confusion, accidents, and it couldn't go on and on like that forever. So there was a need of, uh, of coordination. The, um, the railway companies used, started to use a standard time for their whole network, but it was intricated into different other railway networks, so it wasn't still satisfactory. So the first one to really unify uh, was in uh, the UK. So the British started in 1847 to unify the British Railway Corporation to one, only one uh, coordinated time. For the large countries then it was even more problematic. So in uh, North America and Canada they had to divide the territories into five different time zones. And these time zones are largely used today still. But then we started to move across the continent. So we needed to have a more coordinated global time. So in 1884, there was a conference that actually divided Earth into 24 time zones. Taking as a reference the Greenwich Meridian, so in London, Greenwich Meridian time, giving the acronym GMT. The GMT that was that is actually still used today as a denomination in watchmaking, although it has been replaced in 1967 by the UTC. So GMT uh, is actually the name of a uh, type of watches. There are different display times in the GMT system. One can be through an additional movement or several additional movements. That can be a coaxial hand uh, that is working alongside on a different scale, or it can be also a subdial where you have a second time zone. There are really several ways of displaying this second or even third time zone. Let's have a look now at the world time. It's a very interesting complication, especially for the traveler, because you are able to see all the various time zones in one uh, site. It's a watch equipped with the function that display centrally the local time. And then you have a ring where you have, usually at 12 o'clock, your reference city. And then you have all the other cities 
uh, around the globe. So if you take this example, you are uh, in Paris, it's 10 past 10, so you know it's 11 past 10 in Cairo, it's uh, 8 o'clock in Noumea uh, p.m., it's 3 a.m. in uh, Chicago, and so at, at a glance you are able to see the time everywhere. Very useful and usually also very pretty complication to display on a dial.